Now, the rest of a lot of this is on the cassette tapes, but let me just give you two or three more pieces of the scenario here. Then I want to talk about communications, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Here's two or three more parts to financial independence. Number one, keep strict accounts. This is the best of disciplines. Keep strict accounts. Did you ever hear this expression? I don't know where it all goes. You ever hear that? I don't know where it all goes. Oh, we'd love to have you run our company. You don't know where it all goes. Whoa. Did you ever hear this? It just gets away from me. It just seems it just gets away from me. Oh, we'd love to turn the world over you. It just gets away from you. On. You got to have better disciplines than that. Let that be the 90%. Let that be the scenario of the 97%. But don't let it be your scenario. Don't let it become your philosophy. Keep strict accounts. Next, a new attitude. I had to develop a new attitude as well as new concepts. Here's what I used to say. I hate to pay my taxes. Shope said, well... That's one way to live. I thought, well, doesn't everybody hate to pay their taxes? He said, no. No, a few of us have gotten way past that. He says, once you understand what taxes are, here's what taxes are in our governmental system in our society. Taxes is how you care and feed the goose that lays the golden eggs. Democracy and liberty and freedom. Free enterprise. Wouldn't you want to feed the goose that lays the golden eggs? Somebody says, well, the goose eats too much. That's probably true. I understand that. Of course that's true. But see, better a fat goose than no goose. And here's the truth be known. We all eat too much. Let not one appetite accuse another. Of course the government needs to go on a diet. So do most of us. But hey, you still have to care and feed the goose that lays the golden eggs once you understand that that's what it's for. See, it is so important, the right attitude. Here's what I used to say. I hate to pay my bills. You open up the mails, nothing but these window envelopes. Bills, I hate to pay my bills. Shelf said, well, that's one way to live. I said, well, doesn't everybody hate to pay their bills? He said, no, some of us are way beyond that. I said, is it possible to love to pay your bills? He said, yes. Reduce your liabilities, increase your assets. Wouldn't you love to do that? So start a whole new attitude here. Next time you pay $100 on an account, put a little note in there and say, with great delight, I send you this $100. <laughs> I mean, they don't get many letters like that. Reduce my liabilities, increase my assets. My picture's changing, my picture's improving. I love to pay my bills. Keep the money in circulation. Pay my taxes, feed the goose that lays the golden eggs. It's a matter of attitude. And here's the last on attitude. Everybody must pay. Of course, life is called opportunity, but life is called price. But we must all pay, we must all share. One of the classic stories of all time from ancient Bible script says, Jesus one day and his disciples were standing by the church treasury, synagogue treasury, watching people as they came by and put their offering in the treasury. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Jesus and his disciples standing by the treasury while everybody walks by. Jesus said, how much was that? How much was that? Hmm, interesting. And the story said some people came by, put in big amounts. Some people came by, put in modest amounts, average amounts. And the story says, then a little lady comes by and puts in two pennies in the treasury. Jesus says to his disciples, look at that. Look at that. His disciples said, two pennies, two pennies. What's two pennies? Jesus said, no, you don't understand. She gave more than everybody else. They said, two pennies is more than everybody else? He said, yes. Because I'm certain that her two pennies represented most of what she had. And if you give most of what you have, then you've given the most. What a lesson to learn. It's not the amount. 
It's what it represents of your life that counts. Now let me give you the wisdom of the scenario that did not occur. And this is the greatest of wisdom. And in my own particular peculiar brilliance, I have the ability to record for you what was not recorded in the scenario of the storm. Here's what did not occur, which may teach us one of the greatest of the wise things that was taught in this scenario. Here's, the, here's what did not occur in the scenario. Jesus did not reach into the treasury and get this little lady's two pennies and run after her and say, Here, little lady, my disciples and I have decided that you're so pitiful and you're so poor that we've decided to give you back your two pennies. I'm telling you, that did not occur. If it would have occurred, she would have been, would have been what? Insulted. She would have rightfully said, I know my two pennies aren't much, but it represented most of what I had. And would you insult me by not letting me contribute what I wanted to contribute, even if it's only two pennies? I'm telling you that did not occur. Here's part of the wisdom of the story that was not recorded. Jesus left her pennies in the treasury, meaning everybody to pay, even if it's only pennies. That's the key. And whether you start with pennies or whether you start with dollars or whether you start with nothing, remember, part of the scenario is to spend, of course. Part of the scenario is to invest and part of the scenario is to show a profit and part of the scenario is to help take care of people who can't take care of themselves. If you'll set up your own philosophy, I'm not asking you to buy my philosophy. I'm not asking you to adopt my numbers. I'm only wanting to provoke you to think for you to come up with a splendid economic philosophy that's got you up early and got you up late. It's got you thinking and pondering ways to use your resources and turn it into the dreams you want for the future. And that's my little story on financial independence. Okay. Here's the next to the last subject. Communication. How to affect other people with words. I've got a, just a... Four, a little four-point program here for you to consider the whole expanded version now three days right three days of all this is in the is in that package that you're taking home so this is called an abbreviated version of all the rest this one day video day four steps to good communication here's number one first of all words can work miracles that's why communication is so important. Words can work miracles. Words are powerful. Words are almost godlike. In fact, ancient script says the word was God. God was the word. Wow, words and God. I said to my Israeli audience last year, in the beginning, the story of creation is unique. It says, in the beginning, Jehovah God spoke and said what? I've got some students here, I'm sure. In the beginning, Jehovah God spoke and said what? Let there be light. And what? There was light. Wow! <laughs> wow! It looks like words create light. Is that possible? I'm telling you it's possible. Humans can get pretty close. What if somebody can't possibly see how they could do well, how they could become successful? how they can transform their lives and their health, their future and their finances, spiritually and every other way. They can't see. And you come along and share your story and maybe borrow some other stories. And by the time you get through with a good presentation to this person, they say, now I can see. Before you got here, I was blind. I was in the dark. And while you were talking, some things dawned. Is it possible to create light with human intelligence, with words? And the answer is, of course, of course. Here's part of the spectacular opportunity as a human being. One person talking to another. It's got so much power, so much potential. A mother talking to a daughter, a father talking to a son, a salesperson talking to a client. Nothing more magical and powerful, awe-inspiring than words have the ability to dramatically affect people's lives and futures. So become a good communicator. Let me give you some good keys to good communication. Here's number one, have something good to say. Communication starts with preparation. 
getting ready to speak this year, getting ready to speak next year. Attend the classes, read the books. Have something good to say. Here's four good words to help you to have something good to say. One is interest. Develop a new interest in people and life and what's going on, economics and politics, religion, social structure, possibilities, opportunities. Develop a new interest. Here's the next word. Fascination goes that step beyond interest. That's why kids learn so much that first six years. Fascination. Adults are walking on ants. Kids are saying, don't walk on these ants. I'm studying these ants. I'm looking at these ants. Kids are so fascinated. How come an ant can carry something bigger than he is? Wow. That's how come they learn so much. They're fascinated. And here's another little clue I've learned. Turn frustration into fascination if you can. You'll learn more. I've worked on this. I'm pretty good at it. Out in Los Angeles, I'm on the freeway. My airplane leaves in 45 minutes. The traffic is moving, not one inch. I am now fascinated. <laughs> I'm telling you. Now, it doesn't work every time. That's true, but every time it does work, I'm telling you, you'll come away with more. Learn to be fascinated instead of frustrated if you possibly can. Turn that little scenario on for yourself. Next is sensitivity. You gotta understand, we use the phrase, where people are coming from, where they've been, what's going on. Sensitivity training is so important. People not like you, people that have got challenges and problems and difficulties. You gotta do your best to be sensitive to other people, where they find themselves, the pit they might be in currently, what's going on, be sensitive to that. Here's two of the greatest things said about Jesus. One, it said he was touched. He was touched by where he found some people. He was touched by the misery he found some people in. He was touched, he was touched. And here's the other word, he was moved, it said. He was moved, touched and moved. If you really want to communicate well, you've got to be touched and moved. Not just by your own drama of life, but by the drama you know is going on in other people's lives. Sensitivity. How does an adult 40 talk to a child who's 12? You got to be sensitive. Not just to your current situation. One of the best ways to identify with a child who's 12 and you're 40 is remember when you were 12. Go back, go back, remember the scenario and let it hit you again, let it touch you again. I don't have any problems with 12 year olds. I remember almost every day of being 12. 12 is a unique year. One, you're not 13. I mean, you know. If I heard it once, I heard it a hundred times. Of course you can't go, you're not a teenager. Wow, I can't wait for this year to be finished. Remember, that's part of sensitivity. Remember. Apostle. One who became an apostle, leader of the Christians, was once Saul from Tarsus, hater and killer of the Christians. After he was converted, became a leader, became Paul Apostle. Revered. Why was he so effective in his language and his ability to touch people with his words and with his presence if you read part of the scenario of his history? He gave an account of his own life and said, here's why I think I'm so effective. I remember the pit I came from. Sure, they call me apostle, but I used to kill these Christians and I never forget that. If I want to get in touch with other people's difficulty, I got to remember my own difficulty. Let it hurt again. That's what makes a good performance, a good actor, a good actress. The emotion close to the surface from the remembrance of things past and then well-chosen words delivered with emotion and power. The last word is knowledge. You just gotta go through exercises like this. Take the notes, work hard, roll up your sleeves, go to work. Gather the knowledge in journals, gather the knowledge in notebooks, gather the knowledge in the library and cassettes and videos and every other means. Gather knowledge. Don't be lazy in learning. A major part of Communication is preparation. 